Welcome to a journey into the darkest corners of real-life events. Today, we're delving into the chilling case of the real-life Slender Man stabbing. Let's start at the beginning. Slender Man, a faceless, supernatural figure, emerged from an internet forum in 2009. This eerie character entranced many, especially two young girls, Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser. Their fascination with Slender Man spiralled into an obsession but no one could foresee the dark turn it would take. Little did anyone know that this internet figure would play a central role in a real-life tragedy. In 2014 in Waukesha, Wisconsin, the unthinkable happened. Anissa Vaya and Morgan Geyser, both 12 years old at the time, executed a plan they had been plotting for months. Driven by their shared obsession with the Slender Man mythos, they lured a friend into the woods under the pretense of a game. What followed was a horrifying act of violence. The girls brutally attacked their friend, stabbing her 19 times. Their victim, left for dead, mustered an unimaginable strength. Despite her grave injuries, she crawled her way to a nearby road where a passing cyclist found her. Miraculously, she survived this brutal ordeal. This shocking incident left a community, and indeed the world, grappling with a terrifying reality. Two young girls had committed an act of violence so severe, so unthinkable, all in the name of a fictional character. The magnitude of this crime prompts us to ask what led these young girls to such a violent act? The legal aftermath was as intense as the crime itself. Anissa Weir and Morgan Geyser, barely in their teens, were charged with attempted first-degree intentional homicide. The court proceedings ignited a fierce debate. How should the legal system handle cases where minors claim to be influenced by fictional characters? The girls' defense argued a riveting point. They claimed Anissa and Morgan were not just influenced by the Slender Man mythos, but were caught in the grips of a shared delusion, a mental illness. This opened up a broader discussion around the role of psychological assessments in such trials. Experts were called in to dissect the girls' mental state, their ability to distinguish between fiction and reality, and their comprehension of the consequences of their actions. The defense's argument posed a chilling question. How responsible can children be for their actions, especially when seemingly under the influence of internet phenomena? This case left us with haunting questions about the influence of the digital world on young minds. Anissa and Morgan were ultimately found not guilty by reason of insanity. That's right, two 12-year-old girls committed to mental health institutions instead of prisons. This verdict raised eyebrows setting a precedent for how the legal system handles minors influenced by fictional characters. The question remains, how can we ensure the line between fiction and reality stays clear for our young ones? How can society prevent similar incidents in the future? Join us next time as we continue to unravel the mysteries that shape our world.